Hi, it's very good to be here today and see all of you. I'll be talking, I actually can half see all of you, the, the room is pretty dark and the lights are blinding me. Today I'll be talking about uh, Hadoop's impact on the future of data management. I will cover three things in this talk. I'll first talk about Hadoop and how it evolved over time. Uh, this is definitely an evolution. It's a journey that has been going on for 10 years. So I want to show you a, keep a quick picture of that journey. That's number one. Number two, I am going to talk about what values and what capabilities this platform with Hadoop at the core brings for us, what we refer to as the enterprise data hub. And number three, I am going to talk about how that changes our information architecture uh, going forward. And finally, I will conclude by talking about the Apache Soft Foundation and our community, which is an integral part of this evolution. So that's briefly what I will be covering uh, today. With that said, I have a question for you, and I would like to ask that question and get a show of hands when I ask that question. I would like you to keep your hand up a little bit until I finish counting the entire room. <laughs> and the question is, how many of you know what is this the picture of? You can please raise your hand. OK, keep your hand up. I'm seeing about, I would say, 80% of the room raising their hand. 80% of the room raising their hand, which is great. Now, for the many 20%, I will share uh, what this picture is of. This is the original Hadoop plush elephant toy that Doug Cutting's son had when he was a small kid. And he came up with the word Hadoop, literally. He made up that word that his dad took on and, and made the name of this project. Today, as you know, his son is actually a teenager, and he's very proud of his contribution to our data industry. We all love Hadoop. We love this little fella. It sits at the heart of the platform and at the heart of this very foundational movement. However, we are now way beyond these early beginnings. If you look at this picture, you will see back about 10 years ago, yes, we only had Hadoop, which was built on the concepts of MapReduce and the Hadoop distributed file system. And that is the foundation. It's the kernel. I borrowed the analogy from the Linux space. It's like the kernel of Linux, the heart. But we don't just use the heart. The heart alone is very hard to use without the rest of that platform. So you can see over time, more and more projects kept being, being added to that platform to make it richer and richer. Every year, more and more projects are being added to make this platform more powerful. Today, we have more than 20 different projects that make up this extremely powerful uh, platform. And we foresee that to continue to be the case. And it's our job as curators of this uh, platform to pick the best of breed projects to put together to enable the capability that we refer to as the Enterprise Data Hub. So what is the Enterprise Data Hub? It's two things. It's these two upper bullet points in the upper right that you can see there. First, a show of hands again. Last year, I came up on stage for just five minutes last time, and I talked about the enterprise of the hub, and I used the picture of a camera and the picture of a uh, smartphone to communicate that idea. How many of you were there and saw that? So I'm seeing about maybe 20% of the room uh, raised their hand. So briefly, for the remaining 80%, <laughs> the analogy I was trying to make there is, in many ways, the enterprise of the hub is the smartphone of big data, the smartphone of big data. What do we mean by that? The power, the power of the smartphone, the flexibility of the smartphone is the ability to capture many different types of data, your pictures, your calendar, your videos, and have multiple applications run natively on top of that data without having to move the data first. In a nutshell, multi-in, multi-out. Multi-in, multi-out. How can I? Take in different types of data, regardless of format. It could be unstructured data, like uh, emails or PDF documents. It could be structured 
data from relational tables, or it could be semi-structured data like click streams or logs from servers. Any type of data, images, videos, tweets, anything on the input side. How can I take all of that in and not be constrained by a fixed schema? And then on the output side, how can I consume that data in multiple different ways? That's exactly the capability that we are trying to deliver. And I typically, in my presentations, like to come up with one or two or three words that you can remember so that if I meet you in the hallways, I can ask you and make sure you were paying attention. <laughs> And the word I want you to remember from today is flexibility. Flexibility. That's the word I would love for you to remember. This platform is about offering you the flexibility of storing data of any type, mixing and matching that data together, and then the flexibility of extracting value of that data in many different ways as a function of what you're trying to do. That's really the nutshell of what we're trying to enable with this very rich platform with Hadoop at the heart. That said, to take this platform and run this platform in a production environment, I can't stress, stress enough, I cannot stress enough the importance of security. If you're going to create the central platform where all of your data is being aggregated, structured and unstructured, that is both a curse and a blessing if not done in the right way. A blessing and a curse if not done in the right way. Why? Because that becomes now almost like a honeypot. It's a honeypot of all your valuable data. Yes, instead of having this data spread out of multiple, multiple systems, I now have it in one central place, which makes it easier to control and restrict, but now, there is an attack vector, which is that one central place. So that one central place better be very well secured, very well governed, very well audited. So I can't tell you how many of people that start approaching the Hadoop technology, not with Cloudera, but with, the, with other uh, distributions, and works fine during the POC stages, but then now, now they come to the production stage and they start to go over the security ramifications and they see how lacking the platform could be. So I invite you tomorrow morning, same time tomorrow morning, to hear the talk uh, by Eddie Garcia, the chief security architect at Cloudera, where he will talk more about that. He will talk about secure by default, secure by default, which is required for this vision to be fulfilled. This is especially important in light, all of, uh, in light of the recent cyber attacks that we have been hearing about every other day. So please join Eddie tomorrow morning for that talk. Another very important thing in leveraging this platform, which is the, the, the third bullet point in the production requires, is management. If you're going to be running this platform in production, the uptime, troubleshooting, preventing problems when happening in the first place are very important. At Cloudera, we do what we preach. We do what we preach. One of our core strengths at Cloudera, and sorry for the extra emphasis on vendor, kind of a mini vendor pitch, uh, pitch if you would allow me, is that we collect telematics, we collect log data from all of our customers. Not their data, not the data inside of the cluster, but the log data about how the cluster is being used, the memory consumption, the network consumption, the CPU, the congestion, the operating system parameters, the Hadoop 20 different projects and how they're configured and interconnected, the jobs running. We collect all of these telematics at Cloudera. We have our own enterprise data hub internally, which allow us to do two things for our customers. Allows us to, one, when they have a problem, we can very quickly resolve it by looking at that problem. It had to have happened for somebody else within our customer base. And when we do encounter a problem for the first time, then we go out predictively and find who else has the symptoms that would translate into them hitting that problem a week or two weeks from now. So we preach, we do what we preach uh, at Cloudera. And that's a very big differentiator because the more customers we have, the more capable we get at doing that. This is how the enterprise data hub fits in the bigger picture of what we refer to as the modern information architecture. 
And it essentially is about enabling having this component in the middle that gives us the flexibility, I'm saying the word again and hopes making sure you remember it, of storing data of any type. As you can see from the bottom there, all the data coming in from logs or files or other databases. Bring in all that data, mix and match it together, be able to transform that data at scale so you can load subsets from, of it inside of an enterprise data warehouse and continue your normal pipeline as today. But in addition, be able to run many different types of workloads on top of that data that go beyond SQL and transformations. This is the architecture that we are helping our customers implement inside of their organizations. This architecture has so many benefits. The core one is flexibility. Another one is scalability, being able to do ETL and transformations at very high speeds. And then another one is balancing the economics of how you're storing your data. Enterprise data warehouses are where your first class data should be traveling. But your economy class data cannot travel in the enterprise data warehouse. It needs a new place, and the hub provides that place. So again, flexibility, scalability, and economics are the core advantages of adopting this architecture in a nutshell. To help you with that, we made a couple of recent announcements. We acquired a company called Explain. And what Explain can do in a nutshell is analyze the query logs of a database or a data warehouse. And from these query logs, it can infer what the schemas underlying these queries are. It can detect which of these queries are queries that are suitable to stay inside of the data warehouse because they really need the capabilities of the enterprise data warehouse and the cost that that comes with. And which queries are for data assets that should not be in the enterprise data warehouse and would be better fit inside of the data hub. And Explain walks you through doing that and rewriting the queries for you. Highly recommend you stop by our booth later today to ask more about Explain and see a demo of that product. Another very important announcement we made recently is our investment in Cask. They are also here at the conference. You should stop by their booth. We partnered with them because we realized that this is a very powerful platform that goes beyond SQL and goes beyond business analytics. It enables image processing, right? It enables video processing. It enables uh, geographic geospatial mapping. It enables so many new things that don't, don't fit within the SQL and BI standard way of thinking. And what Cask is trying to do is build an SDK for developers to allow them to do that much easier. So again, highly recommend you stop by their booth and learn more about Cask. Now, last but definitely not least, I wanted to end this talk by extending a million thanks to the Apache Software Foundation. We, all of us, this room, will not be here today if it wasn't for this great nonprofit organization that is helping all of us as a community come together and create this extremely powerful platform. We were recently invited to join a consortium that some of you might have heard about called the Open Data Platform Consortium. And we thought about that, and after some deep thinking, we realized that that consortium already exists. It is Apache. Apache is what we need to focus on. And the ethos of Apache is you join the consortium, you join Apache by contributing code, by contributing to the platform and creating new innovations, which is the right way. So we at Cloudera will continue to do that, continue to contribute to Apache, not just by code. We are taking whatever money we would have paid to that consortium and investing that in Apache as a sponsor. And we continue to hire the, 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 the great engineers working in the Apache ecosystem. Uh, some of you might have seen today our announcement that uh, Yonik Seeley, the creator of Apache Solar, uh, just joined uh, Cloudera. He's another luminary in the space, great believer in open source, source ethos, just like uh, bug cutting. So with that said, I would like to thank and have all of you please give a big round of applause for the Apache Software Foundation. Thank you, Apache. Thank you very much for listening to me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.